All right, how's it going? We're gonna continue on with uh, patching for Inktober, and um, I think it's you know my favorite holiday. It's like Christmas for art people. What I want to do now is get into a, one of the basic forms. I mean, it's the box form. It's the most powerful form you got. One of the things that that is tougher to do um, digitally than in terms of analog is to rotate your canvas or rotate your paper so that it's comfortable to you, for you to draw. I just wanted to mention when you're doing all this hatching and this line work um, that when you you should turn your paper and um, and hatch so that it's comfortable to sort of draw away from you at a very easy ergonomically friendly angle and you know you can do that uh, in Photoshop but I'm not going to because um, that's hard to look at and uh, if I keep rotating the, the canvas you'll get frustrated the first thing that I wanted to notice or wanted you to notice is that um, on this one what I've done is I have gone across the planes without um, a direction change and basically that suggests that these two planes are the same value it's basically there's no there's nothing like special about that and I'm kind of break and I'm kind of breaking a rule so this might be something where it's like backlit or something like that where the light is kind of equally split generally speaking we're not necessarily going to do that in order to differentiate the planes I can also do uh, a line direction change with the hatching and I can go on the horizontal which is really diagonal on one side and the vertical on another and without shifting value I can differentiate which side is which because sometimes those situations do happen um, especially when you get into rendering the human figure and that's kind of something that's that's important to keep in mind is that you know when we go through all these options sometimes they don't necessarily work well for the specific form that we're doing but they're good to have in your back pocket um, as you build your vocabulary of what you can draw another one is where we could do a direction change each side so we could go upward on our vertical here we can go down the horizontal side here which is really a diagonal run all the way down there and then instead of continuing that across the top we can change directions and go the other diagonal so each side of this box now has a different direction and if they don't hold up we can always go in with line weight to just you know help things along the other option just to illustrate this for you is that you could do the verticals on one side and differentiate that and then you could run through and do the diagonals and just go right across that corner and not differentiate them so it's an option I don't necessarily know that it's the best option but it's there for you you may need it at different times the double diagonal so we can go back at a diagonal so what we're doing here is we're translating like horizontal mark into a diagonal back at the diagonal that way and back at the diagonal this way right and hatch it out so we've differentiated not through value but through line direction and that direct in that way all right so you know the top you kind of have two different options that you could do um, just as a side note on the top you could um, you could go with diagonals but you could also go with like strict horizontals and ignore all that and that would be fine too in a sense because you know the top just sort of sits there and is flat the other thing that you could do and this is a really efficient way to go about cross hatching let's say that everything on these back two sides is in tone and core and we're going to introduce a value differentiation next. I go right across that edge doing all the verticals and this sort of quickly just tells me where the light is and then what I can do is throw in cross hatching 
to begin to get into the core tone and to differentiate by line direction. And if I need to bump up the actual tone, I just keep layering it with more hash marks until I get a good value differentiation. Because that's what I'm after. I'm after the value differentiation here, not just the line direction. And if I need to hold that edge, I can bump up the line weight on that edge until it looks like it's held. Okay. Both on the top, sides, bottom, back, wherever I need it, right? If I don't need it, I don't necessarily have to put it there, right? The other option is to do the vertical and then do the diagonal and get this operating as a core, right? So I might have to layer it twice. Usually by the time you layer this a second time, you're getting differentiated enough, right? Okay, and then what I can do on this side right here is I can come in with diagonals to differentiate this side. And this is a good one to have in your back pocket because there are no lines that continue across that front corner, right? We explored this idea of like the horizontal stuff on top, but the real um, fun place for the horizontal is, um, to me, it's more like something for the ground, right? And that's usually what I do. We'll run that up. Okay, so now we have our core tone laid out here and we can then run a ground shadow out and then we can put our cast shadow down on the ground with horizontals. We can use a little bit of other line direction in there too just to fill up space but I like to focus on the horizontals on the ground because it's nice to just have something that's totally different than what's on the actual box itself to get your ground shadow going. And just keep layering and keep layering and keep layering and eventually it builds up a tone. It all kind of like pulls together in the end. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to do a job, right? And its job is to differentiate. So we could come in and we could do a little bit of tone here, right, to differentiate. We could run through, run that line across. We can run back with some cross hatching to get into our core and really get that tone differentiation going. And then we could theoretically throw in a couple of hatch marks like on the back or something like that to just remind us that we're on that surface and that there might be a value shift on that surface. You can get a white gel pen or a white pencil and you can go in onto the top with some uh, white and just throw in some hash marks there. Maybe there's like a highlight that, that hits along this edge or something and that edge isn't even black. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's this uh, whole other tone and um, you know, maybe you're, instead of your core this is differentiated now with tone, right? And so you build single direction hatching. You build it until it becomes a mass in and of itself, right? Might want to hold that edge. You can, you know, maybe throw in some patch marks on here just to create some textures. Then you can go in and throw down a shadow and the shadow now could be a uh, core instead of a instead of a you know actual full dark drop shadow. It could just be you know less differentiation. And this is kind of convenient too because this gives us another option for how to like lay out um, and make you know some things darker than others. Then you can get into rendering effects if you want. 
Um, and this is kind of like the advanced level is when you have a shadow on the ground like this, like we've set up up at the top, what happens is some light comes beyond this and bounces backwards, right? It hits the ground and bounces back. So that means um, you're going to have like sections of this area where you've hatched over everything, right? You start to develop to develop a tone, and then probably up top it's going to be potentially a little darker than down at the bottom, right? So you could go in and you could create a sort of deeper core shadow up at the top, right? And maybe it's like because there's less light on the on the back, maybe it's kind of this and this triangular pattern. Maybe it's deeper up at that top right corner. And maybe down here it's a little it's a little deep towards the bottom where you're not getting much reflected light. And then you have this kind of bright area down here, right? And then all this would be in your core. The other thing too is you can mix in other materials with ink. That's really fun. One of the places that I want to take this is like, well, you know, ink's cool on its own and it needs nothing else. But what else can you combine with it if you wanted to? If you just got bored with ink, or you get frustrated with ink, you know, what makes ink easier to use? Um, what methods and materials can you use to make ink itself easier? What things can you introduce to it? Um, to not necessarily be a purist about it, but then to make the process faster, easier, and to create like a variety of different results. And those things I think are pretty interesting. Um, I could go in there and then I could get you know, that white again, get a highlight or two. Could even just think about holding that back edge. And there we have it. 